Hello everyone, you're very welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be talking about five ways that you can avoid inheritance tax legally in Ireland. Irish inheritance tax, which falls under capital acquisitions tax, is charged at a rate of 33%. The inheritance tax liability is the responsibility of the individual who is inheriting the asset or assets. Depending on the value of the inheritance, inheritances can result in significant tax liabilities for inheritors. And the inheritors will need to have enough cash on hand to be able to pay for any tax liabilities that arise. This can prove to be challenging in situations where an individual inherits a non-cash asset like a property or an investment portfolio. Oftentimes, the individual may be forced to sell the asset or assets even if they don't want to in order to come up with the cash needed to cover the inheritance tax liability. For obvious reasons, it's in the best interests of inheritors to minimize their inheritance tax liabilities in so far as possible. So with that in mind, let's talk about five ways that you can avoid inheritance tax legally in Ireland. Number one, Section 72 policies. A Section 72 policy is an insurance policy that is set up by an individual who is planning to leave an inheritance in the future. The logic here is that the individual leaving the inheritance recognizes that upon their eventual death, their chosen inheritor or inheritors will be left with a tax liability, one which they may not be able to afford without selling the inherited assets. So the basic premise of a Section 72 insurance policy is that when the individual leaving the inheritance dies, the insurance policy will pay out a sum of money that will cover some or all of the inheritor's tax liability. This achieves two things. Number one, it allows the inheritor to avoid capital acquisitions tax, either in full or in part. And number two, it reduces the likelihood of the inheritor being forced into a sale of the inherited asset or assets solely because of a need for cash to cover the tax liability. The reason why these insurance policies are called Section 72 policies is because Section 72 of the Capital Acquisitions Tax Consolidation Act, or CATCA, is the section of the tax legislation which makes this possible. Section 72 of CATCA provides that proceeds of qualifying insurance policies taken out by an individual for the purposes of paying inheritance tax due by his or her inheritors are exempt from capital acquisitions tax. In other words, the use of the insurance proceeds to cover the cost of the inheritance tax liability won't, in and of itself, give rise to a further inheritance tax liability. This is subject to one very important caveat. If the proceeds of the Section 72 policy fully cover the inheritance tax liability and there's still residual proceeds left over, then those residual proceeds will be subject to capital acquisitions tax in the hands of the inheritor. In other words, the proceeds are only exempt from inheritance tax to the extent that they're used to cover an inheritance tax liability. So for example, let's say that the proceeds from a Section 72 policy are €300,000 and the inheritor's inheritance tax liability is €250,000. The Section 72 policy proceeds would fully cover the €250,000 tax liability and €50,000 would be left over. In the hands of the inheritor, the €50,000 would be liable to tax at a rate of 33%, which is 16,500 euro. Now granted, that's subject to the inheritor's relationship with the deceased individual, but we'll talk more about that later on in the video. You might be wondering, why can't the individual leaving the inheritance just leave additional cash to cover the inheritance tax liability? Well, that cash would be classified as an inheritance in and of itself and would give rise to a further tax liability. This is true even if the cash was used to cover an inheritance tax liability. Using our example from before, where the individual has an inheritance tax liability of €250,000, if the deceased individual left a further €250,000 in cash to cover that liability, the liability would be covered. But an additional inheritance tax liability of €82,500 would arise on the cash itself. That's why Section 72 policies are so efficient, because they don't tend to give rise to an additional inheritance tax liability. And if they do, it's normally a small residual liability. So how does one go about setting up a Section 72 policy? Well, the first thing to clarify is your position. Are you someone who is expecting to receive an inheritance or are you someone who is expecting to leave an inheritance? If you're the former, say a child expecting to inherit the family home and other assets, you might encourage your parents to take out a Section 72 policy to cover your inheritance tax liability. If you're the latter, you might seek advice as to whether or not your eventual death will lead to burdensome tax liability 
facilities for your inheritors. If so, you might consider a Section 72 policy to alleviate that burden. Like other insurance policies, there are multiple factors which will influence the cost of the insurance premiums for a Section 72 policy. For example, the amount of cover needed, your age, your health, and whether or not you're a smoker. These premiums must be paid by the insured person, but they can be covered by an employer provided the payment is treated as a taxable benefit in kind. A Section 72 policy can be taken out either directly via the life companies like Irish Life and Zurich or indirectly via a broker. It's important to be aware that a Section 72 policy must be taken out before an individual's 75th birthday. Once an individual turns 75, a Section 72 policy is no longer available. So from a tax planning perspective, it's worthwhile having these conversations sooner rather than later. Section 72 policies can be set up as either single life policies or joint life policies. In the case of single life policies, the policy will pay out on the death of the insured individual. In the case of joint life policies, the policy will pay out on the death of the second surviving individual who is insured under the policy. Joint life Section 72 policies can be taken out by spouses or civil partners. Lastly, the proceeds from a Section 72 policy must be taken no later than one year after the date of death of the insured individual. It's worthwhile noting that while Section 72 policies are designed to cover inheritance tax, there's no guarantee that the amount of cover provided under the policy will be sufficient to fully cover the tax liability that arises in the future, given that the inheritance tax liability will depend on the future valuation of the inherited assets, which may be materially higher than previously anticipated. Number two, the spousal exemption and the capital acquisitions tax thresholds. One of the most effective ways to avoid inheritance tax is to leave an inheritance to your spouse or civil partner. The tax law stipulates that inheritances and gifts received by one's spouse or civil partner are exempt from capital acquisitions tax. In other words, a capital acquisitions tax liability will not arise where an individual receives an inheritance or gift from their spouse or civil partner. This is why many Section 72 policies are set up as joint life policies, because the going assumption is that upon the death of the first spouse, the bulk of the assets will be inherited by the surviving spouse, which won't give rise to a CAT liability. It's only upon the death of the surviving spouse that a charge to CAT might arise for the inheritors, which is what the Section 72 policy seeks to cover, hence why joint life policies make sense. For those who are inheriting assets from someone who isn't their spouse or civil partner, the capital acquisitions tax thresholds will help you to avoid a tax liability. The basic premise of the CAT thresholds is that you don't pay tax on a gift or inheritance if its taxable value is below a particular threshold, of which there are three. Each of these thresholds apply to different groups of people, and the threshold which applies to your inheritance will depend on who you're receiving the inheritance from. If the value of your inheritance exceeds the applicable threshold, then you must must pay tax on the excess value above the threshold. It's important to note that each of the three thresholds are lifetime thresholds, meaning each gift and inheritance you receive over your lifetime will reduce the value of your thresholds. And once they're gone, they're gone. The three thresholds are represented by groups, group A, group B, and group C. The group A threshold most commonly applies to individuals who are receiving gifts or inheritances from their parents and parents who are receiving absolute inheritance from their children, but other situations can arise where Group A is applicable. The Group A threshold is the largest of the thresholds, standing at 335,000 euro. In other words, you can receive up to 335,000 euro worth of gifts and inheritances from your parents in your lifetime tax-free. For example, if one of your parents died and left you 100 grand in cash, then your Group A threshold would reduce to 235,000 euro and you'd pay no tax. If 10 years later, your second parent dies and you're left with the family home valued at 400 grand, then in that scenario, you'd have an inheritance that exceeds your remaining threshold by 165,000 euro. So your group A threshold would go to zero and you'd pay 33% tax on 165,000 euro, which is 54,450 euro. Unless of course your parents had a section 72 joint life policy to cover this liability. The group B threshold most commonly applies where the individual receiving in the inheritance is a brother or sister, a niece or nephew, or a grandparent or grandchild of the deceased individual. For parents receiving gifts or limited interest inheritances from their 
children, Group B will also apply. The Group B threshold is less than 10% of the size of the Group A threshold, standing at €32,500. This is why it can be much more costly for an individual who isn't a child of the deceased to receive a sizable inheritance. You simply have a lower threshold to cover the taxable value of the inheritance. Group C is even smaller again at €16,250 and applies to everyone else, cousins, friends and in-laws. Notice how the value of the thresholds have changed over time. Like every aspect of the tax legislation, the CAT thresholds and the tax rate applicable to gifts and inheritances are subject to change. In fact, a couple of months ago, we made a video discussing the changes to the Group A threshold that were proposed by the Commission on Taxation and Welfare. I'd highly recommend watching that video to prepare yourself for what could be coming in the future. Number three, the small gift exemption. The tax law stipulates that an individual can receive a gift up to the value of €3,000 from any person in any year without having to pay capital acquisitions tax. In other words, you could receive three grand from every person you know each year until you die and you would never have to pay any tax. That's because the €3,000 limit applies on a per person per year basis. This presents a tax planning opportunity. Let's say an individual has a sum of money that they want to leave as an inheritance. Instead of waiting until death, the individual could slowly drip feed the cash to their chosen beneficiary over time by gifting up to three grand each year. This could be taken one step further by having an individual and his or her spouse gift three grand each to their chosen beneficiary every year, effectively doubling the rate at which benefits are being passed. By fully availing of the small gift exemption, not only are you allowing a beneficiary to benefit from what would have been a future inheritance today, but you're also preserving the beneficiary's lifetime CAT threshold. That's because when the inheritance does eventually pass, it will be of a lower value than what it would have been had the small gift exemption not been availed of. Plus, gifts which are classified as small gifts are not counted towards the CAT thresholds. Number four, dwelling house relief. This is a big one. If you qualify for dwelling house relief, you can inherit a house and that inheritance will be exempt from capital acquisitions tax. In order to qualify at the date of the inheritance, the following conditions must apply. Number one, the house must have been the main home of the person who died unless you yourself are a dependent relative. Number two, you yourself must have lived in the house as your main home for the three years immediately before the inheritance. Number three, you must not have an ownership interest in another house. Number four, you must not acquire an interest in another house from the deceased between the date of inheritance and the valuation date. And number five, the house must continue to be your main home for six years after the date of inheritance, with exceptions given for over 65s and those who are required to live elsewhere by reason of employment or mental and or physical infirmity. This relief is extremely valuable because it allows you to inherit a home without having to pay a capital acquisitions tax liability and without having the value of the home eat into the applicable CAT threshold. In practice, individuals who are living at home with their parents are most likely to qualify for dwelling house relief. But remember, you need to be living in the house as your main home for the three years immediately before the inheritance. So if you move out at any point in time, you'll need to move back in for a period of at least three consecutive years in order to qualify. And even at that, there's obviously no guarantee as to when the inheritance will pass. So you'll need to remain there until that happens. Put simply, you need to be living in the home at the time when the individual or individuals pass and you need to have lived there for at least three years prior to the inheritance. If within six years of qualifying for dwelling house relief, you sell the home and you don't replace it with another home as your main home, then the exemption will be withdrawn. Replacement just means that you use the sale proceeds to purchase a replacement home. If only part of the proceeds are used, i.e. in the case of downsizing, then a partial withdrawal of the exemption will apply. In my opinion, the conditions for dwelling house relief are too strict. I would like to see the three-year rule removed, specifically for individuals who are inheriting the family home. It's unfair that individuals who choose to stay at home with their parents should find themselves in a better tax situation than individuals who choose to move out and either rent or buy. 
high. One might assume that those who are renting or buying are in a better financial position than those who are still living at home. But in my experience, many young people are living in the family home purely because the cost of renting is inflated and because home ownership isn't desirable. It's not necessarily a case that they can't afford it. Many probably could if they wanted to, they just don't want to. In fact, many people who are renting are in a much worse financial position than those who are living in the family home. But yet, by virtue of not living in the family home, the renting individual will find themselves in a less favorable tax situation. I would also like to see a relaxing of the requirement that this allows having another home ownership interest. Just because you own a home doesn't mean that you own the home. Take first time buyers, for example. Most first time buyers will only have a 10% equity stake in their property when they purchase it. The other 90% is funded through the mortgage. Is it really fair for one individual to inherit a family home tax free because they live at home and don't own another property while another individual receives a taxable inheritance of the family home just because they moved out last year and put a 40,000 euro deposit into a property? Probably not. The biggest issue with this relief is that it's too black and white. The conditions don't go far enough to consider the wide multitude of scenarios that different inheritors with different financial situations can find themselves in. And I would like to see that changed. Number five, other reliefs. Tax reliefs such as business relief and agriculture relief can reduce the taxable value of gifted or inherited business property and agricultural property by 90%. If you are someone who expects to receive a gift or inheritance of a business, a share in a business, shares in a company carrying on a business or agricultural property, then you may qualify for one of these reliefs. If you were to qualify for one of these reliefs, you could significantly reduce the value of your capital acquisitions tax liability. If you think business relief or agricultural relief might apply to you, I'd highly recommend checking out Revenue's website for more information. I'll leave links in the description of this video. Given that these reliefs will only apply to a small minority of taxpayers in practice, I'm not going to explain them in detail in this video. The other relief that's worthwhile looking into is the favorite niece or nephew relief. Where applicable, this relief can allow a niece or nephew to receive a gift or inheritance of business assets from their uncle or aunt and to have the group A threshold of 335,000 euro applied to that gift or inheritance. Again, if you think this might apply to you, check out the video description for further information. So that's five ways that you can avoid inheritance tax legally in Ireland. Let me know if you have any questions on any of the methods that were discussed in this video. Before you go, you might be interested in checking out this next video, which talks about three more ways to avoid tax legally in Ireland. If you enjoyed this video, you can show your support by leaving a like, subscribing to the channel and sharing the video with friends and family. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you soon.